Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Network Hour podcast. I am your host, Molly Kreese, and today I have a special guest with me, Mr. Andrew Hamilton, amazing husband, super dad, and president of the National Black MBA uh, New York chapter, and a slew of so many other things. So I am going to welcome Andrew Hamilton to the Network Our podcast. Andrew, go ahead and introduce yourself. How are you doing, everyone? Uh, my name is Andrew Hamilton. Um, I'm the president of the Metro New York chapter of the National Black MBAs, and I'm uh, very honored to uh, be in this podcast. And uh, Miss uh, Miss Crease is a dear friend of mine, and I'm looking forward to have a very robust conversation with you all. Great. So before we dive into our topic of leadership and the discussion. I want you to share with our audience uh, one of uh, your networking stories because the, the positions and stuff you're in, I know you've networked a lot. Networking is a big part of what I do and of this podcast. So I want you to share a networking, a successful networking story with us. Oh, <laughs> there's, there's a lot, but uh, one comes to mind. Um, so, uh, I, you know, being in this role, I travel a lot in about the tri-state area. And unfortunately, Mother Nature's not that kind. Um, so one of the times I had to go to a networking event in the city, I, I got caught in a drenching rain. Now, um, <laughs> being my size and, and, uh, and uh, I had a very uh, colorful suit on and um, I had two choices, either go back home or go to the networking event. So I decided to tough it out and go to the networking event. And I'm, you know, as I'm walking around and, you know, introducing myself to people, um, the adage came up, did you bring an umbrella? So my joke was back, my joke was, you know, um, I didn't, um, I, I had a, I had cash on me, but the umbrella guy was only taking what's, um, taking on the cash app and Venmo. I didn't have an account. So I showed my age by saying that I carry cash around. And I show my lack of technology of knowledge by saying I know I didn't know what um, Venlo, Venmo or um, Cash App was. So that's one of my networking stories I could share with you. <laughs> that's the that's the funniest networking story I've heard. But <laughs> okay, that's that's a good one. Um, so tell us more about you, Andrew. We know that you're the president of the National Black MBA in New York chapter. We're going to get into that, but I want you to tell us about who Andrew is, what is he passionate about, what do you do professionally? Ah, interesting. Um, I think my passions definitely evolve and change over the years, um, but as remain the core uh, consistent passions of mine is helping people, um, battling hunger in the world. In the environment. Um, I'm very big into um, those three. Um, I think people, a lot of people are, are walking around with a, a sense of needing being nurtured um, spiritually and, uh, and, uh, and figuratively. And uh, why not me to provide that, um, uh, provide, uh, provide that help. And from the environment standpoint, um, uh, I have a, my, my, my family trade is farming and fishing. Um, just from the Caribbean. Uh, so I have a natural love for the environment and natural love of Mother Earth. So always want to see um, heal itself and do well um, so future generations can enjoy it. And what do you do? What do you do professionally now? Uh, professionally, I am a supply chain professional, uh, which is the full gambit of logistics, procurement, and um, other aspects of um supply chain. I've been doing that for the last 19 plus years. Uh, I've started my career at Expedite International, 3PL firm based in Seattle, Washington, but I've worked out of um, the New Jersey and Long Island office and currently now work for a company called Striker Orthopedics, which is a $2 billion um, medical device um, company. Started out working in joint replacement, hip and knee hip and knee implants, and then migrated to trauma and extremities with screws, um, nails, and other um, trauma products. And I've um, been doing that ever since. So uh, 
been a very uh, well-rounded career as far as um, getting to know um, supply chain. Great. So someone just received an award this year from the National Black MBA Association, uh, President of the Year Award. So congratulations on that. Thanks. And I believe we won the membership award and there was another one. What was it? Leadership channel, second year in a row. Leadership channel, second yeah. year in a row. So the New York chapter is doing big things. So I want you to tell, tell my audience who and what is the National Black MBA and why did you decide to join the organization? I might be going back a couple of years a little bit, but... Okay. Let's, let's talk about it. The National Black MBA to me is made of a collective of professionals that have a this deep desire to give back, a deep passion to pour back into community, but has a clear understanding historically and futuristically what Black excellence looks like. And the reason why you have to say historically and in, 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 in past and your future because that helped you create your present. And I think a lot of times we focus on the past and lose out what's in front of us. And sometimes we focus so much in the, in the head that we, that we lose out and not enjoy the journey going forward. So that's what the National Black MBA uh, means to me. Um, why National Black MBA? And I'll give you a good antidote. Um, we both, both went to the same, uh, graduate program, LIU, um, Long Island University, go Blackbirds. Uh, and I had a professor uh, named Harry Stuckey um, that really resonated with me. Um, been going with us, but you know, um, Hess, as affectionately called him, um, um, had an impact, great impact on my professional career. He was my favorite professor. Yeah, he was, he's phenomenal. He was very hard on me, but I, I loved him dearly. Um, he, met, he mentioned National Urban League, and the National Black MBA Association. So anything else, you, sh you shop, you choose, you look, you peruse. Um, I went to a couple of National Urban League events, um, nationally and locally. And, you know, I didn't, you know, it, it, anything else, you know, timing is right. I mean, they're a great organization, but there was something about National Black MBA, that first conference in Philadelphia, that got me hooked. And, um, and then um, I just stayed close to the organization um was a member then graduated to a volunteer and then um became active one of the committees um one thing i want to say to anyone interested in the organization you gotta join the committees um just can't <laughs> you just can't jump from a to all of a sudden uh, uh why does it make sense to me um and then um i got invited to join the board and i've been part of the board ever since I bet you never thought joining at, at that initial stage of joining the National Black MBA that you would become the president of the New York of the New York chapter. No, I did not. You know, it was uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the kid in the classroom that's in the back. I'm learning, but I'm not. You know, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the kid that always raises his hand. But um, I passed my test, though, wink. But I, I always. <laughs> I am not, I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not the, the, the vocal guy in the room, um, the, to be honest. And, um, I, and I think this, not, I know this position um, definitely um, add a dimension of being more vocal um, and, and being more um, seen and heard than anything else. Yeah. Who were some of your influences within, within the organization, within the chapter that really wanted you to um, stick it out and, and continue with the chapter? And what were some of the things that you got from being in the National Black and Being New York chapter that really made you want to say, okay, this is the place for me. I want to stay here. So my, really two, um, Candace Howell and Sharon Bussey, um, I looked at the, looked at them. They were the early um, early influences in the New York chapter. Um, from a national level, it was going to is going to be definitely um, Bruce Thompson, uh, definitely Jesse Tyson, um, definitely um, 
Donald Calmer, um, definitely um, um, Charmaine Ward Milner. Um, I think that I think those are my um, uh, definitely my national influences. And then um, I have a lot of um, uh, and then um, ultimately also Chuck Roberts. Um, uh, definitely um, uh, those are uh, my early influences and my early sponsors and mentors that I looked up to staying within the organization. Once you became the president of the New York chapter, what were what were some of your goals? The, um, I imagine some you probably this might not be true, but maybe like a kid in a candy store wanted to go and and do things and change things. But what were some of your goals, some of the changes that you wanted to make and, and some of the things that you wanted to keep, but you wanted to elevate? So we're we're very bright and I always say, I always brag about the organization that collected. Um, so really bringing this organization in places that they weren't normally in. Um, being part of public policy, um, being part of discussions that that normally that we don't imagine ourselves to be there, uh, really reimagine ourselves in the landscape of the city, landscape of this landscape in this region, and really um, uh, resonating with our total Black diaspora. Um, a lot of times, you know, um, Black and National Black NBA, uh, there's a focus on African American or American um, descent. I'm Caribbean descent, you're Caribbean descent. Um, we have a global footprint. So, really um, engaging in our Caribbean, African, and also our East Indian or Indian uh, brothers and sisters, and really having a global perspective on the organization and have a global thought and how we can make it influence and impact our community. So that was one of the things that, things that came in with, so how do I make this a global uh, impact versus just thinking about the, the tri-state area or America in itself? Because we travel, you know, so uh, we should limit our, limit our ambitions only to one shore, only to one area, only to one country. Yeah, that is great. And I think that for me too was what attracted me to the National Black MBA. It's, it's the Black excellence and knowing that within our community, we are showing forth a positive, a, a positive experience and showing that we can really strive for what we want and strive for our goals. And uh, I think the, not just the New York chapter, but the National Black MBA on a whole is that kind of um, spotlight? Uh, the, all the ships come come to to dock, and I I really 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 appreciate that about the organization and and about the chapter. So the National Black MBA in New York, we do a lot of a lot of events and a lot of uh, different workshops and all those things. Talk about some of the events and the, the goal behind them for putting forward these type of events. And also talk about the different different arms of the organization. So when I came in, um, we really wanted to reimagine what we can do for the, organ for the community. Um, and I was very fortunate, people like yourself um, around me that um, how can we execute the reimagination of the organization and how can we communicate that out? So one thing, so the programs we've done is financial literacy. Uh, I'm very passionate about um, black economic wealth, economic equity in our community. So we did a financial literacy series. We've done uh, approximately seven. Um, each one's a different topic. Each one's a different opportunity for us to expound on the topic and, and the thought, and it really has resonated with the community very well. We're planning to do another eight, uh, episodes eight and nine this year. And really um, showing the, 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 what we learned in school, how can we apply it now in real life. Other program we've done really that um, I'm very proud of is called nutritional literacy. Poor diet equal, equal poor results. We don't think about diet being a big deal in our community, but with the number of health problems and issues in our community, 
what you put in your mouth, what you put in your body is very important. So really having a robust conversation, how do we reinvest in your body, especially in the black and brown community? And that's what we've done in the nutritional literacy. The third um, program we've done is called Lift Every Voice. That's a byproduct of Chuck Roberts, where he wants to highlight our people, community, people that are not normally known, Anthony McGill, Chef J.J. Johnson, where each of these men are excellent in caliber. But, you know, how many people know about Black and brown people in the Phil New York Philharmonic or know about uh, chefs in, that have uh, places in Harlem or why they open in Harlem and, you know, why they feeding the homeless after hours or, and, 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 and finding, finding shelter for them. We want to resonate this with our community. So we want to say lift every voice figuratively, but also do it in a way that makes sense to everyone to show a different talent of our organization. The other program I'm very proud of, and that's a brainchild of Novo Barrington, Latoya Niles, and Zoe Blackwood is Entrepreneurial Summit, EAS. Um, you can't talk about equity without having your own and building your own. And they have done an excellent, excellent job of highlighting that. And they have done two economic sum, do econo um, entrepreneurial summits. They've done a business symposium, but really has made and pulled the entrepreneur program to the forefront of the organization because we you know it's great to work at corporate America, but it's also very important to have your own. And I'm very proud of that to leave, to leave that late living legacy. The other one that there's, and there's one, one more is um, community conversations led by George Santias, really showing the, 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 the culture and diverse background of, of, of our neighborhoods and community, especially in the Harlem area. Um, he's done a great job of highlighting those with, with Tony Roberts. Um, Young lady, other young lady, the name escapes me. She's an attorney. Talk about estate planning, uh, especially during COVID. Many of us are passing away in a, a younger age, and we weren't um, planning for our future. And the last one, and I'm 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 I'm, I'm incredibly um, proud, but but pleasantly surprised, is a real estate series led by Vanetta Hawkins and Larissa Longchamp. That bore out of a financial literacy conversation last year because of COVID. And that turned into um, a cohort that we just did this past um, year, which members of the cohort were able to buy their, some of them their first homes with investment property. But each of these programs I just mentioned are opportunities for us to pour back into our community and the community to pour back to us, pour back into us. So it's definitely a give and take. So those are programs that are naturally created, naturally born that really resonate with our audience and really resonate with our community, but has a real impact and real meaning going forward for, 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 for the National Black NBA Metro New York chapter. Those, those are definitely, definitely some great programs and things that are needed in the community, as well as the, the education programs that is being done uh, in the National Black NBA as well. Uh, affecting affecting change and creating creating that impact is is very very important and to be the leader and the the head of such a, a chapter is um, a privilege but can probably also a, da a daunting task so let's talk about let's talk about some of your challenges and some of the barriers that you faced and how, how have you maneuvered or overcome those, those challenges and barriers? Ah, uh, great question. So this is, this is a, a um, I call it um, one of the best experiences in my life um, is really now sitting ahead of the classroom um, is really understanding what that what um, I call the, the, the public nakedness looks like, being comfortable, being comfortable in your own skin. Um, challenges. So challenges for me, like any human being, is doubt. Um, am, am I good enough? Do I have to be the smartest person in the room? Um, how do you lead for your ego? Um, how do how do how do I know that doesn't make my ego make me a coward? Um, it allowed me to trust myself. Everything is very, starts with you. And I was able to transfer that trust and the love of myself to others and project that. And 
that allow me to be comfortable with them being autonomous and leading themselves and leading this organization. I cannot do anything without a trust and love between myself and the guys around me and ladies. Um, th there is no way I can do that. And that is an everyday exercise. That's not an exercise that you do, oh, I'm gonna work out Monday and I'm gonna skip the rest of the week. That is a day by day exercise. And checking in with myself, how do I show up? You know, how do I, how do I resonate? Is it, is it really about me? Is it really about, about them? Or really about the situation? How do I show up? Um, well, how do I level set myself to, to, to lead through this environment? Um, there's countless books people have read or written about leadership. And I simply boil it down to how do you lead through your experiences? How do you not take lessons from the moment? The moment is the teacher. The moment is not the student. How do you take those notes from the moment to apply it later on? And it's okay to throw out the notes. It's okay to, to, to ignore the moment. But your experience in that moment will be your guide going forward. That's amazing. Let your experience uh, be your guide. Um, such wise words, people. Such wise words from the president. Okay, so I, I have not, what would you say to people who are uh, maybe in leadership roles um, like, like this or trying to pursue uh, those leadership roles? What, what advice, would you, advice would you give to people? Um, the best advice I've ever gotten, and, and it resonated with me in the last four years, um, being president, not four years, because not you know, three, I'm not aging myself, <laughs> was um, you have to be an excellent follower. An excellent follower would be a good leader. To be a great leader is, bet is between you, yourself and your maker, but to be a good leader, you have to be an excellent follower. Now, someone, you know, and this is where the ego comes in and yourself comes in not, not in, in the program I took um, a few years ago called Momentum Education, talk about nerds and everything else comes in. How do you, you have to identify your nerd, identify your, um, your ego. Because to be a good leader, you're an excellent follower. That means you observe, took instructions, executed instructions based or he or she holding that seat. To be a good leader, you understand what an excellent follower is. So you're kind, you're cognizant, you're aware. You are aware of your follower. You are aware who's following you because they're taking your instructions, dot every I, cross every T. It's not a privilege to be a leader. I won't say an obligation. I won't say a responsibility. I won't, I won't use the word responsibility. It's just your time in that seat. The call. That's a lot of times people understand it's your time in that seat. I didn't, the other three, I'm not going to use that because we always, always use that as a, you always use that as a distraction or a vice. But be excellent follower, you'll be a good leader. Moving from good to great, that's between yourself and your maker because everyone has their vices and something they need to work on. But you could get there. But again, be an excellent follower. Those are some... <laughs> Those are some great ones. Um, yeah, those are definitely, definitely some great ones. 
so um, we didn't talk about this, but tell, tell, because I assume after people listen to this interview and stuff, they're going to want to um, know more about Na- National Black MBA and want to become members. Uh, we, we won membership award this year. So tell us about how many members strong are we here in New York? And uh, how can someone um, become a member of the National Black MBA? Do they have to have an MBA or? No, they don't. Uh, just show up with a smile, an open heart. Uh, we have a thousand members strong in the, in the, in, uh, in our chapter and we're growing. And um, there's information on the website, but you can always reach out to myself, uh, members on my team, or um, the best word of mouth is another member. I'll let them tell you, he or she, how they feel about the organization. Um, but get to know us. Um, we're, we're, we're good. We're growing. We're, uh, um, and we like to have fun, smile. And um, we're here for you. We're here for you. As I, I think we're, we're definitely here for you. So. And, and tell and, and bring us to your job as well. Who's looking for? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stay, you gotta stay on this. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta stay plug, on. gotta plug that in there. Yeah, gotta I gotta plug stay that on in there. So. We are lo- looking to collaborate, yeah. looking to yeah. create a bigger and even more greater impact. Yeah. Um. So, what is next for Andrew Hamilton? I don't know. <laughs> Write a book. Uh. Uh, maybe um, uh, definitely teach. Uh, definitely stay within a nonprofit space. It's definitely got a lot. I definitely got a full jug. So looking to pour back and um, take to take up. You know, maybe just focus on one of, one of my hobbies. Um, learning learning how to fly a plane. So uh, wow. I'm looking, yeah. So I'm looking. <laughs> so, so I'm looking to you know <laughs> pay a little bit more attention. Um, I don't, I don't, you know, it's, 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 it's fantastic. I mean, uh, the, the, the time in the seat is, you know, is about to wind down, but um, I'm still in the classroom, still in the hallway, still in the building, you know, and, and the building needs to, building needs to, building needs to expand. So I'll be, you know, focusing on adding wings and, and uh, additional stories to the building and, you know, like any, any great city started with a building, so it was a schoolhouse, and now we're just building it block by block, and and hopefully we get a big metropolis. So that's great. Any last minute advice for our leaders out there, especially our black men who are looking to affect change in their community and create that impact and that space. Um, for others, because a uh, National Black MBA has really uh, secured a seat at the table. And I would say the organization and chapter have created uh, multiple seats and rooms for other um, young professionals, young Black professionals to pull up their seat at the table and, and, and share the meal. So what advice would you give to young professionals, black men, especially in the community who is trying to be in that leadership, those leadership roles, who's coming up, wanting to create that impact, wanting to be the change they want to see happen in this world. Um, hmm. So I told you my, my family trade is farming and fishing. Um, other part of that trade is education and other part of that trade is, is masonry and carpentry. Um, every house is built by a simple nail and a hammer. Um, it takes no skill to take a hammer and bang it through uh, whatever material you're looking for it, in it. Um, I will say focus on what your Im- impact can be. Um, focus on what you can be done. Um, every nail driven in every house takes one or two bangs. So you're not going to get it on the first bang. You're not going to get on the first swing. Um, you're going to mess up some nails. Some nails are going to go crooked. Some nails are not going to go drive all the way in. Some nails are not to be driven in because you can't drive. You don't have the strength right now 
strength, aka knowledge right now to drive the nail through that nail that material. But it takes practice. It takes skill that you will develop by just trying. Simple steps, bigger impact. No complicated mousetrap, no complicated theory. Really need simply is a good heart and a little bit of focus. That is it. And that's all I've done. And you could build great things by having that mindset. So um, I'll leave you with this. Um, someone gave me a great metaphor or adage about cathedral building. And um, the person that designs a cathedral or lay the first stone will never live to see the cathedral being built. But you put the blueprint in someone else's hands from generation to generation to finish the job. It's your responsibility to finish the job. I will not be around when the cathedral is being finished built. That is, that is it. I'm not going to be around. But I trust that what we've laid and designed will work. And you can change the design if you want to. But the building has to get built. Can't stop. So hopefully that will make sense. So. Great advice, great words of wisdom. And we are just about out of time and wrapping up. Thank you so much, no Mr. Andrew Hamilton, for visiting and coming through to the Network Hour podcast. This has been amazing. Um, I meant we can probably talk for another half an hour on <laughs> the National Black MBA and leadership and Black excellence and all those things. But I uh, want to leave us with these tips that you've given us about being a good leader. Uh, you said be an excellent follower. Self-awareness is very, very important. Your time in that seat, focus on it being your time in that seat move from good to great because we don't get to great overnight we you have to move in the, in that process in those in those steps you need to be ever learning good heart focus simpler steps and that mindset have to be a positive mindset and i think those are really great attributes and really great things to aspire to to be uh, that good and excellent an effective leader. And you have certainly been one of those leaders. I have been um, enamored by you and really humbled to be under your leadership. And I want to thank you so much for that leadership and for giving us the space to shine within that leadership. And I just want to thank you uh, for being that light for other Black men out there. And Thank you for coming on this podcast. Thank you for having me. And everyone, uh, please, if you want to learn more about the National Black MBA Association, the New York chapter, you go to nyblackmba.org. Uh, and I will be putting all of that information in the podcast notes uh, so you would get it. I will also be putting um, Andrew's contact information if you want to contact him. Um, for anything and I want to thank everyone so much for listening and for watching this has been another episode of the network our podcast until next time live love laugh and we will see you in the next episode goodbye everyone thank you